Welcome to the Wealth is in the Details podcast. In this podcast, financial planner Peter Raskin helps families and business owners understand and prepare for their wealth journey. Along the way, thoughtful and detailed planning can provide clarity and confidence as clients confront a multitude of financial decisions. Listen in as Peter shares stories and insight into people's wealth journeys. Now, let's get into today's podcast. Hello and welcome to Wealth is in the Details with Peter Raskin from Raskin Planning Group. Peter, what's going on? I'm fine, Eric. How about yourself? Well, you know, the, the throat's a little itchy. I may be clearing my throat a little bit today. Peter, I'm a part of the big club of COVID. Yeah. Uh, my, oh first, my. my first time with COVID, my wife and I both got diagnosed with COVID last week. We're on the men, thankfully, and I appreciate the communication between you and I this last week. And and uh, you are very gracious, but audience, you need to know, Peter does a lot of prep for these podcasts and uh, schedules them you know, uh, a bit in advance. And I'm not, I'm not, not going to be here. If, if I can talk, man, I'm here. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. I appreciate it. And uh, I hope you and your, your family feel better soon. It's just, it's no fun. No bueno. <laughs> yeah. We'll get through it. We'll get through it. Hey, what are, you, what are we talking about today? I know that this is a, it's a topic that you've kind of spoken about before, um, but I, it's kind of a different slant in a way. Yeah. I mean, I'm calling this, can, uh, you know, a new year, a new plan. And that, that's, that's the theme. Uh, you know, so, you know, my thinking here is that the, the new year, while it's just a place on the calendar, it's not really meaningful. Um, it is a good time for us to, to, to assess, you know, what's happened mm -hmm. in the previous year and, and gives us an opportunity to look forward to the next 12 months and beyond. So that's, I'm a planner. This is what we do. Um, I, I just want to point out, I always think it's, the healthiest thing to do is to to live in the moment and, and not focus too much on the past nor the future, you know, but, but again, I, you know, I'm, I'm always thinking ahead because that's what I do for a living. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I stress that, that we want to be present. We want to be thinking about, you know, be there for our families, our work, our passions, but there's always this balance, you know, you have to do, you need to think ahead. I think it's best for all. So that's that's my job is to help our clients meet those future objectives. So today, I thought we'd talk about a process that will help our listeners move forward and, and make progress toward their goals. Well, that's the thing. Your clients, and this is just my opinion, of course, but your clients hire you because you're the one looking ahead. You actually free them up to be able to live more in that moment because with the planning that you do and the, the, the communication you have, that gives them that opportunity. People that don't have somebody like you in their corner, they're the ones that have to think of, you know, five, 10 years down the road and it can get overwhelming. Right. And, and I know that you've talked about this process on past podcasts. Is this a different assessment or is this kind of the same thing? Well, it's, it's similar. It's what we take our clients through each year, but I think this is kind of a way to prepare for the conversation, whether it's with me, whether it's with a spouse, whether it's with, some, you know, another advisor, but it's just a, it's a way to approach um, the annual review. And, you know, I, I think as, as we do this on a regular basis, and I tell my clients this, that, that our plans get, get more detailed. It, this is, this is a, um, uh, something that I think you need to work on. You, you need to get better at. And so the planning, the, the thought process, the annual review becomes more meaningful as time goes on. Um, you begin to expect these conversations in these, and you begin to prepare each and every year. And when you've done it once, you can do, you do it a little bit better the next year and the year after that. So I think that's what makes this different is this is, this is something that you can you and a family member can sit down at least once a year and say, okay, let's, let's, let's think back. Let's think about the last 12 months and let's think about the next 12 months and then, and, and going beyond that. All right. So let's, you said, think back, right? Is that the first step? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know, for me, if I'm having this kind of conversation with my spouse, um, I'm going to sit down with a, a glass of wine. <laughs> You know? There you go. <laughs> or maybe, maybe for, uh, for some people, it's that big bowl of ice cream, you know, whatever gets you there. Or some cough syrup. Or some cough syrup. Yeah. 
and, and, you know, and sit down with, with, with someone. And I think that's helpful. If you, if, if there is, if you're, if you're, you know, single, um, I think you can still, you can still sit down and actually make it a, um, uh, you know, part of your evening, part of your Saturday morning, um, set, set stuff aside, quiet time. Um, and, and I'd set aside, you know, 30 to 60 minutes. I, I think that's, that's helpful. It may, may take more, but this is the first step in your assessment and your review of the year. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, don't expect after this, you know, 30 to 60 minutes to have a complete assessment and, and to have all your goals calculated and figured out. Um, hopefully you'll leave this meeting with, with kind of dates on your calendar when you can accomplish certain things. So, you know, next month I'm going to do this in, in, in the, the month after I'm going to do that. So you've scheduled your time and, you know, you don't need to, to do it all in one sitting. All right, Peter, we've got our glass of wine and we've got our bowl of ice cream, which I don't know if those two go together, uh, but uh, <laughs> for some our, people, yeah, for some people, probably our feet are up. We're relaxed. Maybe a fire going now. What? So I always think let's, let's, let's relish in what we did last year. You know, let's yeah. do a quick assessment. Um, you know, what did we accomplish? Uh, I think it's important to, 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 to look back um, and then also think what didn't get done that, that carries over to the new year. And that's OK, too. You know, we don't beat yourself up. Uh, you know, we, you try to do as much as you can. And and if you didn't accomplish something, fine, you just do it again. Um, you, you put that on the list for 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 the for the new year. And for example, that just might be estate planning, you know, something that you had every intention to do. Uh, this year to review your estate plan, your documents, make sure they're up to date, make any changes, but it just didn't get done for whatever reason. So put that on the list. That's going to get done in, in the new year. Or maybe it's a home improvement project that you wanted to get done or a second home or, you know, whatever. Just thinking about what didn't you do that carries over. And then um, think about what worked and what didn't work, you know, for you. As you thought about, as you did your planning the year before, what felt good and what didn't feel feel good? You know, were there significant unplanned expenses that um, that you were control controllable or not? Um, was there a sickness? Was there unplanned travel that you did, both pleasure or not or not pleasurable? You know, was there a job loss? I mean, just again, think about that quick assessment. I don't think you need to spend a ton of time, but um, I think it's a helpful. You know, pat yourself on the back when you deserve it. And um, and then when you didn't get the stuff done that you wanted to get done, we'll just move forward and and um, put it on the list for, for the new year. Um, so once you've done that, I think it's help really, really important to review those big objectives, you know, the big picture stuff. Um, and, you know, some people don't have those big objectives. They're, they're just, you know, they're thinking day to day. How can I get through the next month, the next, the next six months? And they don't necessarily think far ahead. And that's fine. But I use, um, especially when I'm meeting with clients, I use certain prompts. So I want to know about what's going on with the kids, about the family. Mm. Um, uh, is, is there... Uh, divorce, you know, retirement, health, is there someone moving? Uh, is there a housing change, you know, new cars thing? So I use prompts to ask questions about these kind of typical life events. And then I then I, I think it's really helpful to think about this in time periods. So short term to me is over the next 12 to 18 months. Um, that's that's your immediate uh, future. And then I want to push that envelope. I want to kind of think about a five-year period and maybe a 10-year period. And then there's the long, long term. And th those are maybe dreams, but helpful to, 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 to have out there. So think about immediate 12 to 18, maybe even 24 months. Think about the next five years. Think about the next 10 years. So kind of um, you use it as your, as your, as your um, kind of, your 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 future. Um, you don't want to go crazy too far out, but at the same time, you really want to address the immediate. And your your immediate issues are going to be uh, probably a lot longer than your long term. Um, some of us don't have long term. <laughs> they just we're not thinking that way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're if you're thirty years old, 
um, you may not be really thinking about what you're going to be doing in retirement at 65. That's maybe a little bit too far. But you may be thinking about your next your next location for living. You know, may, you may be thinking about your next your next job, your next career, your 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 you know how you and your and your significant other are going to approach the next five years, whether it be kids or 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 housing, whatever. But it's just helpful to think about those objectives in in increments of time, because uh, that can can affect your actual planning. Okay, I'm, I got to be honest, Peter. I'm kind of surprised to hear you say that a uh, you know maybe a 35 year old shouldn't be thinking about you know when you're 65 and what your retirement's going to look like. Um, you're a planner. <laughs> this is what you do. But I get it. I, I get why you're saying it. Um, but is, is that something maybe they need to be thinking about just kind of that overall question? Do I want to retire? <laughs> do I want to be working in retirement, which is kind of a you know contradiction? Um, because doesn't that help break down what the overall planning for any of the goals, whether it be one, three, five, 10 year, doesn't that all play into it? So, so absolutely, Eric. We, we need to do we need to do both. We do need to th consider that long term because you know, for, just as an example, retirement planning. The 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 more you save early on, uh, the better off you'll be. The longer you'll have to compound the dollars. So yes, you always want to be thinking about the long long term. So even even though you're not focusing on thirty five years, um, you still need to consider it. Uh, I, I think it's really helpful. So it's it's this balancing between thirty five year planning a, a thirty five year plan and a and a five year plan. Um, you know, if you're planning for your 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 priority is is to is to buy a house in the next five years, well, that may take a priority, but that doesn't uh, uh, it may be you may want to prioritize that over retirement planning, but that doesn't mean you you just avoid even thinking about mm -hmm. retirement. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a, again, it's a balancing act. Got it. Now that makes sense. So, so the next thing I, I, I recommend our clients do is to really just review income. What's it going to be for the next 12 to 18 months, for example. But, and I think about uh, income as earned, you know, from, from work and unearned, meaning from your investments, if there's an asset being sold, so really two two different ways to generate income, earned and and unearned, unearned, um, and, and and then also do you, do you anticipate any potential job changes uh, in this short period of time? Will there be uh, is your is your is your job at risk? I think you need to take that into account. Um, do you think you'll you'll be making a change, and will that increase your income? So. We've reviewed objectives. Then, then the next important item is just to review both earned and unearned income, and then write down those numbers. They don't need to be exact, but but what potentially will that be? Uh, I think is just is very very helpful to know. So we've we've re reviewed income. Now we want to review our expenses, and this may be the the much more difficult <laughs> um, item to review. Uh, again, we want to look back to get a sense of what might happen in the future, but we don't want to only focus on, on our historical expenses. Um, it's, it's, this is a going forward look at your planning. So we are, I always um, think about discretionary expenses and non-discretionary expenses. So non-discretionary expenses are things like like utilities, like your rent, like your mortgage, like your... Um, uh, your car, groceries, all the things that you need to spend money on on a day-to-day -day basis, week-to-week, -week, month to month that just need to get paid. Um, it may be your lifestyle and you can adjust your lifestyle may be adjustable or discretionary. but but the things that you have com you've already committed to are really not discretionary. And that's not your goal. When we're doing planning, we're always doing an I want plan, not an I need plan. Mm -hmm. So we want to deal with our clients. Um, you know, their their data, their information, not based on what they necessarily need on a day-to-day -day basis, but what they really want. So I think that's that's a, a, an interesting way to think about it is not um, just not what I need, because I, I can live in a tent, um, but I choose not to. I, I live in my, you know, my, my 
four bedroom home in a nice suburb. Um, and I've made that choice and it's going to cost me more than living elsewhere. That's a choice I've made, but that becomes a non-discretionary expense. Uh, discretionary expenses are also important to, to really get a handle on. Uh, and these are things that we really truly can can change throughout the, you know, throughout the year and, and every, throughout the years as we're planning. Mm -hmm. you know, what do those vacations look like? Um, what are we giving to charity? What about those large one-time expenses, whether it's a, a second home or a wedding for a child or, or um, you know, those bigger items that, that truly we can choose to do less of or more of in any given year? Um, what about our kids and our family? What do they need? Um, do we want to make contributions to education accounts for our children or our grandkids? Do we want to make um, help them with their own retirement plans um, via contributions to to Roth IRAs, for example? Um, do we want to make gifts to them to make their lifestyle a little bit easier? Help you know help help with whatever. So those are the conversations to have with yourself and your spouse. These discretionary expenses really are so important. Um, and with that, we also want to take a think, we think about what happened and transpired in the year before. Um, that may make a difference in our, in our discretionary expenses. If we had that big vacation last year, maybe we need to, or we want to just lighten it up a little bit in the new year. Um, if our investments um, perform poorly because of market volatility and 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 we had losses, um, maybe we don't want to quite buy that new car in the next year. Maybe we can push it off into the into a, a second or a third year. And those things make a big difference in our overall planning. So again, we want to review those expenses. This may not be the time or, or this, the, the, the 30 to 60 minute time to really uh, roll up our sleeves and get into that detail, but that's something you may want to schedule um, with yourself or with your spouse to begin building that data so you can make clear and, and, uh, and, and reasonable projections on a going forward basis. Well, yeah, and, and that last piece that you just said, um, diving deep into it, definitely, I think, scheduling some time because you spoke on another podcast about taking a look at those past expenses and how many subscriptions you may have that you don't use. Those little things add up, right? And those discretionary uh, spending, uh, the, the money that you're spending in that discretionary category, you may be able to do a little bit more for the grandkids or do a little bit more toward that vacation if you eliminated some of those subscriptions you didn't even know you had. Yeah, you got it. Absolutely. And I'm, man, I suffer from that as well. I collect subscriptions, uh, <laughs> whether it be streaming services or, mm -hmm. uh, or magazine subscriptions, uh, you know, those are the little ones. Guilty as um, charged. But they add, they add up. Um, so, so we, we've reviewed income, we've reviewed, we've reviewed expenses. Now, I think you can quickly look at your, um, your your, your employer-based benefit plans. I think that's helpful. You know, typically at the beginning of the year, they roll those out. Uh, if you're still employed, you're working, maybe you you want to take a look at your at your health plans, your retirement plans, your bonus plans, your stock options, you know, whatever it might be, get that list from your employer, go through it and say, am I taking advantage of all these things? Um, whether that be, um, uh, you know, the 401k, uh, taking advantage of the matching contributions, uh, stock options, stock option plans, or stock mm -hmm. purchase plans, um, flexible spending accounts, or health savings accounts. All of these things are available. They can make a big difference in your overall planning. And once a year, just take a review and see what uh, what, what your employer offers. They, they can be really, really helpful. Absolutely. Hi, this is Catherine Broy from the Raskin Planning Group. Apologies for the interruption. Thanks so much for listening to Wealth is in the Details. We hope you're enjoying it so far. If you have any questions or would like to talk more about this topic, please visit our website at www.raskinplanning.com. Look for the podcast's show notes and connect with us via social media. Next step is let's review savings. What, have, what are options do you have to save? What have you done? And what, what's available to you? What kind of tax-deferred 
accounts are available to you, whether they're employer-based plans like 401k plans or 403b plans, or just personal retirement accounts like IRAs or traditional or Roth IRAs. So we've looked at, you want to look at tax deferred accounts. Then you want to look at after-tax uh, savings accounts. For example, um, oh, just investing in, on a regular basis into a, an investment account. Maybe it's a 529 plan for a child or a grandchild. Uh, but just how much are you saving in non-retirement accounts? It's monies that, that might be needed or wanted uh, in two, three, five years, 10 years. But it's available to you uh, on a uh, pretty tax advantaged way. Um, and then we've we've talked about your objectives. Well, this is a time to sit sit back and say, okay, how much do I need to save in order to meet these specific objectives? Whether that's mm -hmm. a new car, whether that's education for my kids, my grandkids, whether that's for retirement, um, whether that's for the second home. What do I need to set aside on a regular basis to help me meet those objectives? And then the last item I always want to review, and I, I think people um, underestimate um, how much they need, but I think a cash on hand. You know, how much is in the checkbook <laughs> or the savings account? Money that you have access to. And I, you know, I, I'm a conservative. I'm a conservative person, and. Um, I counsel my clients conservatively. I, I want them to have enough cash on hand to meet all of those emergency expenses or those planned expenses that they know are coming up in the next, and I use this term a lot, the next 12, 18, 24 months. You know, mm -hmm. what, what might you be spending money on? Whether it's that big vacation, whether it's that that new car, it's always better to pay for things in cash. You 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 want, certainly want to avoid paying for things, you know, via 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 by borrowing. It just mm -hmm. no reason to pay that expense. So we want to make sure we've got enough cash on hand. And that's part of your your savings review. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It does. It's it, it's it's a it's a, sometimes it's a tough conversation for people because. Um, They've got very limited cash on hand, and in order to meet those objectives, they might have to take monies out of retirement accounts. Um, it can be, it can, it can just take time to get there. But I think you want to be patient, but you you have to have that as a primary goal: build enough cash. Yeah. Part of the um, the planning process is to is to think about those milestone ages <laughs> that, that are coming up. Um, it, you know, and I, I, these are typically around retirement issues. Um, but, you know, I, I, I'm just going to just give you a list of, of retirement ages that, that or ages that are important. Uh, age 50, um, for example, you qualify, if you're age 50, you're qualified for catch up contributions to retirement accounts, whether that's 401k or IRA, you can boost up your savings a bit. Um, at, at age 59 and a half or older, you can take take uh, distributions from your retirement accounts, penalty free. And uh, just an important uh, indicator, just know that at 59 and a half, you can do that. Um, at age 62, you're eligible to take social security. Uh, I, for most clients, we don't recommend that they take social security at 62 because there's a significant haircut. Mm -hmm. uh, you get far less at 62 than you would at 67, which is for, for many people that are a few years from retirement, are, are um, that, that's their full retirement age. Um, but it's important to, to, to know that those dates are anywhere between 60, 62 and 67 is, is probably your full retirement age. Um, and you want to you want to get to that 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 age 67 if you can. Um, and if you if you push it out to age seventy, you maximize your Social Security benefit. There's a lot more planning that goes into into uh, into this into into the the conversation, but just we want to take into account those milestone ages. Um, I'm going to back up a little bit to age sixty five. That's when you're eligible for Medicare, often a uh, important milestone for a lot of people. Um, if you're still employed, you can continue your health insurance probably through your employer if they're a, a larger company. Um, but for many people at age 65, they qualify and um, you want to make sure you're getting on, on Medicare on a timely basis. 
Um, so we've reached age 70. We're taking our full retirement age. At age 70 and a half, uh, if you've got retirement accounts, IRAs, you can make charitable distributions uh, from your IRA. And that's a tax uh, advantaged uh, gifting strategy. So you can make gifts, charitable gifts, use your money in, in your IRA accounts, your traditional IRA accounts to do that um, at age seven, starting at age 70 and a half. Um, and then the last kind of milestone date is age 72. And that's when you are required to take minimum distributions from your retirement accounts, uh, especially if you're, if you're, if you're, if you've retired, if you're still working, uh, and you're you're uh, not an owner of the of the organization you work for. You may be able to defer that beyond age seventy two, um, but just again, just a consideration, just at those milestone ages. And I think it's helpful to to think about that on a year to year basis. Yeah, quick question, Peter. I heard a rumor, and maybe you can verify um, that the catch up contribution rule is that changing next year. The rule is not changing. The um, the amounts are going up. The amount. That's what I was thinking. That's what I was talking about. Yep, Sorry about yep, that. Yep. So so now you can save a little bit more using uh, the catch up contributions. Oh great! It keeps right. up with inflation, at least uh, ideally. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Good to know. So the next item of review is um, again, and this is something you might want to set aside another another meeting with yourself and your spouse is to review your 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 the risk in your world. You know, and here I'm thinking about insurance policies. Mm -hmm. uh, just, you know, every year, take a look at what you have for insurances, whether that's life insurance, disability insurance, long-term care, health, property and casualty insurance, you know, your home, auto, umbrella insurance. You just want to take a look at these things once a year. Are they, are they, are they meeting your needs and goals? Do you have enough life insurance? Do you, do you still need life insurance? Um, are you paying your premiums on time? Um, you know, is your health insurance meeting your, your goals? Have you changed medications? Um, and if your needs potentially changed, you know, these are the considerations that, that you should look at each and every year. Again, it doesn't need to be a completely detailed analysis. You can have your advisors, your, your insurance brokers, help you with this, but just get them, get, get out the, the list of policies and the benefits and, and, and make sure you understand what you have and what you might need. Absolutely. Um, we're, we're getting closer to the end, but I got a couple of more I items to review. And um, this last item is something that, that we think it's helpful to at least have a quick review each year, but I think you want to go into, into more detail at least once every five years, and that's estate planning. Um, you know, no one likes to talk about their demise, <laughs> but uh, it's very important to just keep your eyes on that. Um, life is full of changes. Uh, we don't always um, we don't always think about how life's changes can affect our our estate plans, um, what we want, when we want that, when we want it, how we want it. But it's important to at least take a step back and review what you have already, what your goals are. Um, and here I'm thinking about beneficiaries and, and who your trustees are, your personal representatives, um, your healthcare proxy, your um, powers of attorney. Uh, and think about primarily, have your goals changed? Is, is your family situation different? Have you moved to a different state? Um, again, when was the last time you actually reviewed that, that estate plan? There could be tax laws that have have, have uh, changed that affect your planning um you know if you, if you're not if you're not in this world of estate planning and tax review you may not you, you may not know that there are changes that's why it's really important and helpful to again bring your advisors into the conversation so in estate planning review i think uh, a quick quick look each and every year um, and then once every four, five, six years, really do a, a, a more complete review, bring in your, your attorney to take a look at your documents. Um, and then the last item I, I think you, you, you want to take a look at is uh, on the investment side. So you want to take a look at, at your portfolios, your, your different buckets of, of, of assets, your stocks, your bonds, your real estate, um, 
are these portfolios, are these investments, are they structured to meet your, your current and your future objectives? Um, and I, I just want to make a note here. This is not the time that we're doing an, a, a, a complete a, an assessment of your investments, meaning the historically how you did. Um, that's a question for another time. Um, the question right now is, is my portfolio structured to meet my short and long-term objectives? Schedule some time, meet with your investment advisor, meet with your your, your, you know, review your, your, your assets, your liabilities, your, your situation, make sure you are getting what you want and need. Um, but this is a, an opportunity to take a look at your investments from a kind of a global perspective. Are they doing what I want them to do? And am I best positioned to, uh, with those assets? Yeah. Peter, I'm kind of surprised because the, your investment review, that's at the bottom of your list, right? And, but at the same time, I know you well enough that that's not a, you know, that's not a oversight on your part. What does that tell our listeners when it comes to that being kind of the last thing you covered? Yeah, no, investment review is super important. And, and as I said a couple of times, it, it should be structured to, to meet those objectives. But but I think you got so many issues ahead of you um, that drive your investment decisions. And that's the, that's uh. the list we just reviewed, whether it's estate planning, whether it's um, cash flow planning. Uh, risk planning, all of this thing kind of really need to be addressed bef before looking at the investments. Because if you don't do those other planning reviews, you're not, you're really not in a position to judge your investments. I think that's so, such a, just an outlook. It's a, it's a way to think about it. Many of our clients come to us and that's the first thing they want us to look at. You know, yeah. well, what about my investments? Well, you know, yeah, we'll get there. But first, we need to know what you want, when you want it, how you want it. Uh, that drives your investment decisions. And so, again, it's it's a two pronged analysis. One is the more global investment review, which is what I'm talking about here. And then secondly, as you're going, you're doing a deeper dive in your annual analysis. How did we do is there anything that we could have done differently that would have improved our situation? Um, that's that. It's it's really a two step, two two step process. Yeah. Well, honestly, honestly, Peter, this is a great reminder, and I know I should be doing all this right each and every year, but I got to be honest with you. I I don't have the patience. I, I feel like most of the time I don't even have the bandwidth. I certainly don't have the attention to detail <laughs> that goes into this kind of stuff. Um, and, uh, my wife would tell you that I don't have the discipline to do this every year. Um, and that's the other thing, my, my wife and I make a great team, but we're not always on the same page, right? We, we approach things differently. We, we talked about that when uh, we were talking about planning and grandkids and stuff. When we had our grandkids, she lost her mind. Um, she loves to spoil those, those, those three. Now we've got three, but uh, you know, I'm not on that same page. We approach things differently. Um, and I think we work better, honestly. When there's a third party, somebody who is not emotionally invested into whether it be the grandkids or my future boat, uh, <laughs> there's no emotion there, right? Um, and I, you know, th that's what you do, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, this is self-serving, I, I, I know, but um, you know, I think the planner is, is is perfectly suited to do this review on an, on a regular basis. Um, there, I think it does. It is helpful for for the 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 couple um, to sit down and prepare for the review with the planner, the, that independent person who's got perspective and experience. Um, the pl planner asked a lot of questions that maybe the, the client doesn't think about. Um, they were able to also take that data and do that analytical assessment. Mm. That And that's the, that's the harder work. Um, that's the detailed work. Um, you know, wealth is in the details. That's the name of our podcast. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's, we're, we're asking all these questions. We want to know, uh, we want to do this review so we can get to the end result, which is an assessment of the client's current situation, their current goals, their, their, their assets, their liabilities. Are they able to meet those, those goals on a going forward basis over the next 12 months? 36 months, five years, 10 years, and 35 years. And I think, I think the planner is suited to do that. Um, and, and I think it's helpful that 
again, self-serving, but I think it's really true. Um, and that's what we enjoy doing. I love um, reviewing life's goals with our clients. Yeah. It's it's fun to me. It's fun hearing about what their world is like, how it's different than it was the year before. Um, it gives me great pleasure. And I think it 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 I think it's very helpful for our clients to to give them that that confidence and clarity as they're looking at their at their futures. Yeah. I appreciate everything you do, all the education you bring. Let's get you some more fun. All right. So that means we need to get people to reach out to you and uh, schedule some time so you can do those reviews and uh, have fun with them. How do they get a hold of you? Uh, I think first step is go to our website, raskinplanning.com. Uh, our contact information is there. Glad to glad to talk with anyone and uh, see how we can be of assistance going forward and in planning out the new year. So uh, a, a good, healthy new year to everyone that's listening and uh, hopefully good things happen. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate it, Peter. Thank you so much. Thank you, Eric. And, and I hope you feel better. Oh, I hope so too. <laughs> And of course, our last thank you always goes to you, the listening audience. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to the Wealth is in the Details podcast with Peter Raskin. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when Peter comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. And we humbly ask that you share this podcast, rate it, and leave a review, as this actually does help others find the show. Again, thank you so much for listening today. For everyone at Raskin Planning Group, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Wealth is in the Details podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Lincoln Financial Advisors Corp. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning. Peter Raskin is a registered representative of Lincoln Financial Advisors. Securities offered through Lincoln Financial Advisors Corp., a broker-dealer, member SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through Sagemark Consulting, a division of Lincoln Financial Advisors, a registered investment advisor. Insurance offered through Lincoln Affiliates and other fine companies. Raskin Planning Group is a marketing name for registered representatives of Lincoln Financial Advisors. Lincoln Financial Advisors Corporation and its representatives do not provide legal or tax advice. You may want to consult a legal or tax advisor regarding any legal or tax information as it relates to your personal circumstances.